Patrol. Today we're going to be doing a coolant exchange on my Civic Type R. The reason for that is that we're getting into cooler temperatures. It's winter time and the coolant that I currently have in the car, the mixture which is water wetter, distilled water and factory coolant is only good down to 10 degrees. So we're going to be flushing that out with factory coolant which is good down to negative 34 degrees according to the label here on the back of the bottle. So we'll go ahead and get started now. All right, to uh, start the coolant exchange, you're going to want to remove the radiator cap. And it doesn't matter if you've got the factory coolant tank or a radium coolant tank, just remove the cap. Otherwise, the, the fluid's going to come out really, really slowly here from the bottom. So what I've already done is to remove the, the splash shield. If you have a factory radiator, you don't need to do this. And I'll show you here in a second. Since I've got the PWR radiator, I have to remove it. Um, it also looks like it's going to make an absolute Mess. Whereas with the factory uh, radiator still installed, you're not going to make a mess at all because it's able to leak straight down from the uh, the under panel here. It's got a little hole that's built in where it can come through. But um, either way, draining it, the method is similar uh, and the outcome is the same. Okay, so underneath the car here, just want to point out kind of where we're going. So for the PWR radiator, it's the blue grommet right there. It's a 3 16 hex. Um, and that's where the fluid's going to come out of. Now the factory radiator, see this hole right here? That's where the coolant comes out of, but in the PWR's case, it's not designed the same way, so it's just going to make a huge mess coming out of this splash shield area here. So I'm going to have to be really careful with the, uh, the drain pan to try to catch as much of it as possible. So this is the factory radiator. You can see here where the fat cock is. And you don't remove this completely when you're doing the coolant exchange on the factory radiator. So you're going to have your radiator cap off and then you're going to come and loosen this a few turns. And underneath here is the hole there. I hope you can see it right where my finger is. I'm going to zoom in there for you. It's going to come pouring out of here. Now if you take this completely out, it's going to come rocketing out just like it does with the PWR. But uh, there is a gap in the under paneling where the coolant can pee out without getting all over the place. So it's honestly a better design uh, for, for maintenance and service than the PWR is. But, um, you know, if you've got a PWR, you're going to be dealing with uh, what I was dealing with. And if you've got a factory radiator, you'll know what to deal with here. Kind of as I expected. The PWR uh, radiator, makes, it makes an absolute mess. That plug flies out and this stuff just goes everywhere. So all the coolant now is drained into the bucket. You can see here in the sight glass that that's empty. There's nothing inside of the reservoir right now. So it's time to, to top everything up underneath the car here. And I still have the, the bucket. I've reinstalled, you know, uh, the drain plug in it so that nothing else is coming out. So that's insecure and tight. And uh, as I said just a second ago, it's time to start filling it up which is uh, really the easy part. Okay, so one tool that really comes in handy for this is one of these funnels. It's made by uh, Lyle inside the box here. You'll see that I've got several different size fittings as well as a, a stopper. Like if you don't want any more coolant to go in, you can just stick the stopper in there and it stops it. Um, but I mean, it goes without saying, a funnel's great for not making a mess and also filling things up. So we're gonna be using this. Now we're not gonna be brimming it like you would on a car that has uh, the radiator uh, attached to the actual radiator itself. Since this is more of a uh, swirl design, it's gonna take care of most of the burping for us while we run the car. So we're gonna fill it up first, then we're gonna start the car. And as the coolant level drops, we're gonna add coolant. Um, we're gonna let it get up to operating temperature. Make sure that you do this without the air conditioner running because you don't want the air conditioner fan running. It does take a while for the car to get up to temperature um, uh, at idle. Uh, so it's really gonna be sitting here running for probably about 15, 20 minutes for it to, to get up to temperature. After that, you're gonna put your radiator cap on. Um, make sure that your fluid level's at the right um, uh, the right level, then take it for a test drive. That way uh, you'll you'll probably find some air bubbles on the test drive and when you come back you're going to need to add more. Um, an important thing to do before you go on the test drive though and probably during the last two or three minutes of this is to crank the heat on in the car. That way coolant has a chance to go through the heater hoses and the firewall and push out any bubbles that may be up inside of the, uh, the heater core. Um, otherwise run into random air pockets and random air pockets will cause the radiator cap to open a little bit and release uh, basically an air coolant mixture out of the puke tube.
Okay, so the idea here, since this is kind of slow going, is to start the car, that gets the water pump in motion and that's gonna help pull the coolant down. Um, and just gonna have to be Johnny on the spot with the coolant topping it up as that goes down. So we're gonna go ahead and fire the car up right now. I already pulled it down. So the car's been running for about five minutes here. My coolant level is actually pretty darn high at the moment. Um, see if I can't get that to focus for you. Um, actually, it might be a little bit lower than it was, which means it's pulling it down. A little bit of staining in there, but either way, while you're doing this, you want to be feeling the hoses. So this one is slightly warm, and the lower hose is still ice cold. Um, You'll know when the radiator is open when the temperature is equalized between the two hoses. So basically what you're feeling for is, is the bottom hose hot, is the top hose hot, and uh, once they're both hot, you know that the thermostat's open, and after that point, that's when you can take it for a test drive, not before. So let it warm up completely uh, before you take it for any kind of test drive. Just monitor your coolant level um, and just, you know, hang out for a little while. Again, you want to make sure that your cooling fan's not running, so I've got the air conditioning turned completely off because we want the motor to warm up all the way. So I'm in the car now, and uh, one thing that you can do to help the car get up to temperature a little bit faster, as well as help the, the water pump cycle any air bubbles out, is to race the engine. So uh, you're not going to go crazy with this. Just go ahead and, and pull it up. You can go anywhere from 2,000 to 3,000 RPMs without you know, any, any cause for concern. Um, but either way, what this does is if there are any air pockets in the system, it's moving faster through that, uh, the water pump and it's going to help push some of those air pockets out. Um, I've also got log R up so that I can see what my water temperatures are. Uh, the thermostat opening is, it, it's going to be a while, but, uh, we've, we've got to wait, uh, in order for the, uh, the thermostat to open so that, um, if there's anything, you know, uh, inside the engine block, as far as, uh, uh, an air pocket uh, that we were able to get that out and then when, uh, and right and again right before we um, uh, cut the car off to take it for a test drive we are going to turn the the heat on here so I'm probably going to wait another five minutes or so then I'll cut the heat on full blast with the uh, with the AC off um, and try to burp out some more air that way so I've got four bars on the heat gauge right there, which is fine, showing 168 here. So like I said, another five minutes to go. We're gonna try a couple other things before we take it for a test drive to get any more air pockets out. So after rubbing the engine, the coolant level is now down to about here, which is great. Um, it was all the way up here and it's since come down. Uh, that's what rubbing the engine helps to do. It helps to, to push the coolant through the system and get any air out. So air is coming out of the top since it's you know, so I'm gonna stick my finger down in here and it's helping to bring that coolant level down so that we can get a more accurate read of where it needs to be when we're done. So back in the car, 176 degrees. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat on. So we're gonna just, we're gonna go to high and See where it says AC off there? That's what you're looking for. Another good way to tell to make sure that your coolant is bled all the way is if it actually does heat up. So down here by your feet, you wanna be paying attention. If it gets nice and hot in the car, that means that you've got good saturation through the heater core and not a big air pocket. Um, so be mindful of that. You definitely want it to, to get nice and toasty in the car while you're doing this. So keep in mind, my temperature was 176 and it's dropping because I've got the heat running here. So another thing that we can do to assist with burping the coolant, we can rev the engine at the same time. So it's okay to generate some heat while you've got the heat running. Came from 
167 up to 168. That'll continue to climb slowly. There we are at 170. That's what we're looking for. And I can feel that the heat on my legs is gradually getting warmer and warmer. Again, also what we're looking for here. Now, the thermostat likely isn't completely open yet, so um, I might do a couple cycles of this where I have the heat on, where I have the heat off, and I'm gonna keep feeling those radiator hoses. Once I have heat in both of those radiator hoses and they're nice and hot to the touch, I'll check the coolant level again, kind of top it off to the middle of that uh, sight glass. Then we're going to button everything up, take it for a test drive. And uh, after that, depending on how the test drive goes, we bring it back, we check the coolant level, and uh, if it looks okay, then we consider this done. All right, so we're at 179 degrees inside the car. I don't have the heat on right now. I, I cut that off. So I just want to point out that I do have heat in my upper hose. And I'm beginning to get heat here in my lower hose. They're not equal yet. And another thing that you can wait for is for the cooling fan to come on. Um, you know, while it's idling here, that does take quite a while because it's not going to develop a lot of heat while it's idling. So, you know, I can do a combination of racing the engine um, and or driving the car in order to get it up hot enough so the cooling fan does come on. You know, when the fan is on, you know your uh, the thermostat's open. You can also tell just by the heat in the hoses here. But the fans are a really good indicator, so some of you guys might want to look out for that, um, especially if you're kind of new to doing this. But I am getting good heat in here, just enough so that it kind of tingles when I touch it. Um, my level has pulled down considerably, which is good. It's now down here at the bottom, so I'm going to top that off just a smidge. Um, and uh, what that's really indicating to me is that the thermostat may not be fully open, but it's partially open. So any air that's currently inside of the motor is coming out. So I'm gonna get inside the car. And I'm gonna race the engine a little bit more uh, while the heater's off um, and try to get it even warmer and then I'll, I'll top that off. All right, so my fan just cut on. Again, I've got good heat up here. The heat is now matching in both the hoses. The fan is running pulled down a little bit more cool even though I topped it off so I'm gonna I'm gonna fill it up about to the halfway mark and uh, and now it's time to take the car for a test all right, just got back from my test drive. Coolant level is right here in the middle, exactly where I want it, so I did not top it off. But what I will do, however, and what I recommend you do is just check it periodically for the next couple days after doing this, just to make sure that, you know, if there was like a latent air bubble in there that you weren't able to get out that, you know, does come out and you'll notice your coolant level go down, just be ready to add a little bit to top it off. And also important, just check for leaks, make sure that your radiator cap is secure aside from that it's a fairly easy process so now all I got to do is get my under panel put it back on the car and uh, and we're gonna call it done <laughs>